OPC UA is a widely used data exchange standard that was first put into use over a decade ago. You may be using it as a part of your application, and if you are, you may want to bring in data from a Groove device, like an Epic or a Groove Rio, like I've got on my Learning Center right here. In this video, I'll go over how to set up the OPC UA server on this Rio to accept connections from OPC UA clients and request Groove data. Now, for the purposes of this video, my test client will be UA Expert, and I'm just looking to show that the data is flowing. Once you set up your own OPC UA server, you can use whatever client you want, whether it's Ignition, Wonderware, Iconics, Canary, or any of the other thousands of compatible clients, you're good to go once the server is set up. So, to get that started, you'll first need to log into Groove Manage and select the Data Service menu. You can see right at the top it tells us what we need to do. We need to configure at least one protocol and one scan device. So let's do that. We'll start at the bottom with the scan devices. You'll see here, because I'm on a Groove Rio, my only option is to add a local I.O. system. But if you're using a Groove Epic, you can also add your pack control system. And that's going to include both tags and variables that you have running in your strategy. For now, we're just focused on Rio, so let's add this local I.O. system. I'll give it a unique device ID that's just going to be my device host name, which is rio-cert, and I'll put underscore IO because this is the IO system. Below that, you can see I can select which protocols will actually be published or accessible over this data service. I can have MQTT string, MQTT spark plug, OPC UA server, or any combination of the above. This video, we're not really looking at MQTT, so we'll just enable the OPC UA server and select save. The rest of these defaults are uh, okay for me. So once I've saved that, the next thing we need to do is add the OPC UA server configuration. So I'll just select that, and you can see we have a lot of options here. Starting at the top, we do have this TCP port, which you can change, uh, but I'm going to leave it as default, and you will need this discovery endpoint in your client. So I'm going to copy that to my clipboard. Below that, I have my configuration options. And for this video, just to show it working, we're going to allow anonymous access and we're going to allow writes. But if you're using this in a production environment, you really don't want to be allowing anonymous access. You really want to make sure you have the credentials of a user that has the data, surf, data service OPC UA server permissions enabled. And what does that exactly look like? Well, let's jump over to our users. This will work for LDAP users as well, but we're going to use the built-in Groove Manage users. Here you can see I have system-wide administrators. If I select one of those, they do have read-write permission over the OPC UA server data service. And that's automatic. As long as you're an admin, you have access, so keep that in mind. But you can also create separate users, like I have this OPC UA user here, that just has read-write permission over the data service. I can also change this to be read only if that's more appropriate for my particular application. So that's how we manage the users when we're not using anonymous access. In this case, we are going to enable that and we're not going to be enacting any security policies. Again, in production, you will want to pick one of these so that you're not putting your username and password and all of your data over the network unencrypted. You should choose in, uh, one of these encryption methods. So with uh, my settings set for this video, I'll go ahead and click save, and there we go. Everything's set up, my warning has disappeared, and now I just need to enable this runtime. While this enables, a bunch of things are happening in the background, but something you should be aware of is that it is opening that port number that we were looking at in the OPC UA server uh, setup. So right now I don't have that port open, but we'll see as soon as this uh, data service setup is enabled and this completes, we'll see that the data service will say running and we're going to switch back over to the firewall and see that yes, a port has in fact opened. So that's just something to be aware of when you run this. So I'll refresh this page and here we go, right at the bottom, you see now we've got this data service on that port that I had selected. So the data service is running, it has opened the port in the firewall, we're all good to go. So let's bring open my client of choice for this video. It's UA Expert. I'll just bring that open here. You can see it's uh, a fresh session here and we're going to be adding a new server. So I'll come over to advanced so that we can see all the settings available and I'll give this the configuration name of just the device host name. Then I'll paste in the endpoint URL making sure there's no spaces on either side or extra characters and I will need to place, replace that generic address with either the IP address or the device host name. So I'm going to stick with host name just type in Rio cert and we're good to go there. 
Here under the security settings is where you would pick that encryption method that you would set over in Groove Manage. Below that, you can put in your username and password of your OPC UA read write or read only permission uh, user. And finally, you just click OK. And you'll see it appear in the server list over here on the left. I'll go ahead and click connect. And we'll see that it's going to reach out, attempt to connect to my server, and then it hits the certificate. And now I didn't manually install this certificate already, so it's just making sure that I know what I'm doing and that I do in fact trust this server. And I do, so I can trust it permanently or allow just a single temporary connection for this session. I'll go ahead and trust it, select continue, and it'll begin the connection. To confirm that it does in fact trust this certificate, I can come up to settings, select manage certificates, and you can see, there we go, it says trusted this Rio cert right there. So now that I'm connected, we can drop down our objects, look at our devices, and you see right there's that Rio cert IO. Under that, I have a bunch of different data points. I have my device properties where I can check out my firmware version or my part number. We can expand that out and see that I do have a Groove Rio MM1, uh, as well as the current firmware version 3.4a. Below that, I have Opto MMP with my single module and all of the channels that I have configured right now. So you can see I have this top button. If I drag in the state of that, you can see that it's currently false. If I toggle it on, we'll see it switch to true. If I were to grab a relay and drag the state in, uh, because I enabled writes, I can double select this. And if I check it on, we'll see this LED turn on for the channel here. And there it goes, it just turned on and off again. There we go. So we clearly have a bi-directional connection to the IO here. We can also look at different analog values. For example, if I drag the value in here for this potentiometer, I can turn it down and we'll see the fuel level drop. And if I bring it all the way up again, we can see it raise. So right here, we see all the different channels that I have enabled. But you'll notice that there's one, two, three, all the way to nine different channels here. But if we look at my IO channel configuration, we'll see that there's actually 10 channels here. And the one we're missing right here is this bottom button that doesn't appear in my list over in UA Expert. And the reason for that is I never configured it to have public access. So I can easily enable the state read to publish the state over my data service. Now note that when I do enable this, if I also have MQTT, it's also going to be publishing over MQTT. I can also enable this counter here so that I can read how many times it's been toggled. So all I have to do is select save. Now we have public access. And if I come back here, all I need to do is right click on my device, select rebrowse. And when I come down to my modules and my channels, we'll see right there is my bottom button. It picked it up right away. Now I can drag in the state of that bottom button as well as the counter. So we'll see that the counter is at zero, the state is false, I'll hold it down. We'll see it's true and one, and we can just keep increasing the count every time we press it. We're easily able to grab all of this data right here into our client. And again, this is just showing that the data is flowing, how easy it is to set up and test this out. You can use whatever client you need for your particular application. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you have any questions, we'll have lots of links in the descriptions below. And we also have forums over at forums.opto22.com. Thanks for watching.